So let's go on with this uh, last part of the final week. So after his death, Theodosius' sons, Arcadius and Honorius, inherited the East and the West parts of the Empire. And the Roman Empire was never again reunited after the division in between Arcadius and Honorius. So Arcadius that was in the East died from an unknown cause and was succeeded as he uh, decided by his seven-year-old son Theodosius II. But because he was so young, he ruled under the guardianship of the Persia of a Persian king. Then affairs of the state were conducted by uh, the commander of Theodosius' imperial guard, Anthemius. But after the death of, of him, uh, the role was undertaken, the role of uh, uh, conducting the affairs of the state, by Theodosius' elder sister called Pulcheria, that then was declared saint. saint. So Theodosius II, this very young boy, commonly surnamed Theodosius the Younger or the Calligrapher, uh, because uh, you will understand, uh, so he will uh, contribute in coping a lot of uh, uh, low codes, was Eastern Emperor, uh, so Byzantine Emperor, since the time that the emperors established in Constantinople, so uh, in the Eastern Alf, from 408 to 450. So we are at the half of the 5th century, very near the fall of the western part of the empire. So he is mostly known for, for promulgating the so-called and famous Theodosian Law Code and also for the construction of the walls around Constantinople. Here in the picture we can see a restored section uh, of these walls. We can see the outer wall and the wall of the moat and uh, a tower of the inner wall in the background. So a very strong fortification. So is in is four hundred and twenty nine. So was four hundred and twenty nine when Theodosius appointed a commission to collect all the laws since the reign of Constantine the uh, first. So and to create a formalized system of law. But this plan was left unfinished, uh, and the work of a second condition that met in Constantinople. Uh, was uh, uh, to collect all of the general legislation and bring them up to date. So at this point uh, um, the work was completed and their collection was published as the Codex Theodosianus, so uh, the Theodosian Code of Law in 438. So this law code uh, was summarizing all the edicts promulgated since Constantine the first and formed a basis for the very important law code of Emperor Justinian the first in the following century, the famous Corpus Juris Civilis, which uh, will become the basis of much European law codes. So, uh, to mention something about Justinian, he was Roman Emperor uh, from, from now. Um, uh, the Roman Empire was only uh, the Eastern uh, uh, Alf uh, from 427 to five, uh, 527 to 565. So, more or less one century after uh, Theodosius II. So, the young years of the powerful Theodosius I were in general feeble and incompetent. So, from the death of Theodosius I, 395, to the disappearance of the Western Empire, 
uh, dated in 476, mighty figures stalked across the stage, but they were not uh, neither Roman or uh, Byzantine emperors, so ne uh, neither um, uh, Western nor Eastern emperors, but barbarians. So, uh, from the tribes of the Vandals, the Visigoths, the Ostrogoths, so subgroups of the Goths, Franks, and most terrible of all, Huns. So, and uh, after the murder of Valentinian III, that was Emperor of the West from 425 to 455, Theodosian dynasty was extinct in Western Europe. So, Rome was captured and sacked by Alaric the Visigoth in 410, after he had only the previous years accepted a bribe to go away from Italy. Though Pope Leo then managed in 452 to negotiate terms with Attila the Hun, so the Scrooge of God, uh, the famous Attila, uh, to leave Italy, after that he had ravaged much of uh, it, in 455 it was the turn of the Vandals. Rome was sacked again, this time from the sea. And this is the time of the murder of Valentinian III too, uh, that we have seen in the previous uh, uh, slide. So, we are at the very end with uh, direct attacks to Rome and sacks of the city. So the first sack occurred, those that of Visigoth, uh, of the Visigoths led by Alaric I, August 24, 410. At that time you already know that Rome was no longer the capital of the Western Roman Empire because uh, um, initially was replaced by Milan, called the Mediolanum, uh, so in Latin, and then by Ravenna mm, on the Adriatic coast. Nevertheless, the city of Rome retained the paramount position of it as the so-called uh, Eternal City and the for sure spiritual center of the empire. So the sack of 410 by the Visigoths was a major shock to contemporaries um, that were friends or not of the empire. And this was the first time in almost 800 years that Rome had fallen to an enemy. The previous sack of Rome had been accomplished by Gauls uh, in 387 BCE. So the three waves of um, uh, attacks from the Gauls during the early Republic, Republican time. So the sacking of 410 by the Visigoths is seen as a major landmark in the decline and fall of the Western Roman Empire. Saint Jerome, living in Bethlehem at the time, so in Palestine, in uh, Judea, wrote that the city which had taken the whole world was itself taken. Finally, in 476, Odoacer, a German mercenary commander, deposed <clears throat> the 14 years old emperor Romulus Augustus uh, and informed Zeno, emperor of the East, that he would be happy to rule as king of Italy under Zeno's jurisdiction. So Odoacer chose not to be emperor, so Augustus himself, nor to serve another Western Augustus, but to be the viceroy of one of Roman emperor in Constantinople, so in the East, in the Byzantine Empire. So effectively, we can say that in 476, the Roman Empire in the West ceased to be. So this is the end of the Western Roman Empire. 
Interesting uh, is that the last emperor in the West is called Romulus Augustulus as the founder of Rome and the first emperor. Now was the Roman Catholic Church assuming the role of unifying the lands and people which had formerly been Roman, for, uh, formerly been Roman. So organizing uh, these lands uh, uh, and the sphere of influence along Roman lines. So maintaining, for example, the dioceses uh, created by uh, Diocletian. So this is the situation, uh, the Western and Eastern Empire by 476. Western Imperial authority had retreated to the Italian borders, parts of Northern Gaul, uh, and uh, um, parts of northern Africa. Then you can see the eastern side uh, is uh, much wider. So the eastern or Byzantine Empire or Byzantium was the oriental part of the Roman Empire, predominantly Greek speaking, as you remember, which lasted throughout late antiquity and the Middle Ages. So, could be known simply as the Roman Empire or Romania by its contemporaries, but the empire was centered on the capital of Constantinople and was ruled by emperors in direct succession to the ancient Roman emperors after the collapse of the Western Roman Empire. Here you can see the uh, Eastern Empire, the Byzantine Empire, at its greatest extent under Justinian again in 550, so uh, in about a century from now. So the Byzantine Empire mm, existed for more than a thousand years. So from about 306, when uh, Constantine moved the capital uh, to uh, Constantinople, uh, to 1453. During its existence, the empire remained one of the most powerful economic, cultural and military forces in Europe. Most of its remaining territories were lost in the Byzantine-Ottoman Wars, which were ended and culminated in the fall of the city of Constantinople in 1453 and the cession of remaining territories to the Muslim Ottoman uh, Empire in the 15th century. So here we can see in a French miniature of 15th century, the siege of Constantinople in um, 1453. So, but let's end uh, saying something about the legacy of Rome. So what we have to say is that the remarkable thing of the Roman civilization, for sure, is not that ultimately collapsed, but that from such minute beginnings, do you remember, it survived for so long under so many external and internal pressures. And it lasted long enough, and the pressures were resisted firmly enough for so many of what were Roman practices, even before the Christian era, Become, became entrenched in modern life. We have many things remembering us about uh, the Roman Empire extension. For example, this aqueduct at Segovia, Spain, still in working order. So then, very important, except for the addition of three letters in English, the alphabet used in English and Roman languages, and for German, Scandinavian and other languages, is that which the Roman developed and refined for their own language, the same alphabet. And the success of Leiding as the foundation of so much of modern language is not just due to the fact that it was possible to use it eloquently for the expression of literary forms, but that it could be employed so precisely to express points of law, science, theology, philosophy, architecture, agriculture, 
botany, medicine, and etc. Then, uh, as such, it was the language of scholarship and prose uh, in Western Europe during the Middle Ages and Renaissance, and it is the language of the Roman Catholic Church, and it survives intact within the English language and in other languages in the form of texts and phrases. We have seen many during this course. Without this close uh, acquaintance with leading literature on the part of writers in other languages, there would be, there would be virtually no English or European literature before about 1800s. Then, the Romans had a systematic attitude to measurement, and so this uh, attitude enabled them to, for example, establish the basis, the basis of a calendar which has never effectively been improved upon, and to devise methods of, uh, to assess distances uh, with great accuracy. Then they turned building into a science and gave new improvement to hydraulics. Here in the picture we can see a very interesting device for measure, measuring distance described by Vitruvius. So the important uh, uh, architect and scientist writing a book on architecture and uh, many other studies uh, in the first century BCE. Then finally, the contribution of Roman law to European law is uh, incalculable. Uh, we have seen in this uh, uh, last class too. And from the Romans come the traditions of impartial justice and trial by jury mm, that we are using in our modern uh, law systems. Then many and many things are Roman institutions, banking, public hospitals and libraries, uh, postal system, daily newspapers, fire service, the central heating, glass windows, apartment blocks, sanitation, drainage and sewage systems, social benefits, so welfare and public education. And so is uh, that universal common bond and basis of social life, which they call the familia, the household, and for us it's family, or family unit. So their basis for the society is uh, uh, the most uh, influencing uh, um, legacy uh, that came uh, to us. Okay, so this is the end. I hope you enjoyed and uh, you learned something from uh, this course and especially in this difficult situation. But uh, you have been very good in following, in being engaged, in being present. Uh, and so I'm very proud of you. And I for sure, I'll see you soon. Bye guys. Bye bye. Love.